All right, what's up guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media back with another Dokkan Battle video. So these days, all anybody on the global side can talk about is the upcoming five year anniversary, right? And rightfully so, it makes sense, right? All anybody really cares about is the Blue Fusions, Introse, Fizz Broly, cause that's the hype thing right now. And I get it, that's really all I can think about as well. But, but one very obvious, yet important fact we gotta keep in mind is that the anniversary is not the end of Dokkan, it's not the end of Global, and there's a lot of great units and great banners that we already know about from the JP side that will be coming to Global later this year, right? So in today's video, we're gonna take a quick look ahead, a quick uh, preview of the other stuff that'll be coming to Global later this year that you guys may want to save your stones for, and uh, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So the first thing I want to talk about before we get into the JP banners is one other major celebration that should be coming pretty soon after Global's five-year anniversary, and that would be the next download celebration. So last year, it was 300 million downloads, so this year, it should be 350 million downloads, all right? So obviously at this point, we don't really know what's coming, right? Like we don't have any official details from Bandai or any leaks from Team Dokener or any of the other data leakers out there, but we do know for a fact that this celebration is happening and we're most likely gonna be getting another LR Duel Dokkan Fest. Like last year, we got AGL Gohan and Int Cell. And then for part two, we got another new LR, the LR Androids, right? So for this year's celebration, I'm thinking it's gonna be something GT themed. Not really sure why, it's just more of a feeling. And maybe for part one, we'll get an LR Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, an LR Omega Shenron. And then for part two, it's gonna be like a new LR full power Super Saiyan 4 Goku or something like that. Like I said, I have no idea, so it's really just pure speculation at this point, but either way, regardless of what we get for the celebration, I can guarantee you that the banners are going to be very good, the units are probably going to be OP, and uh, it's definitely something you want to save your stones for. So if you guys thought that you could just go all out for the 5 year anniversary and your stones and your wallet would be safe after that, then you were dead wrong, man, because there's still a lot of fire on the way for Global later this year, and the 350 million download celebration is only the first thing, okay? So from there, let's move on to a few of these other uh, JP banners that we know are going to be coming over at some point, and we're going to start here with the Dual Dokkan Fest between Int Gotenks as well as Tech Boo. Now, just to be clear, I'm going to be talking about these banners in the order that they released on JP, but I don't actually think that we're going to be getting this Dual Dokkan Fest after the download celebration because they don't usually do Dual Dokkan Fest that close to each other. I do think that we're going to be getting another Dokkan Fest banner after 350 million downloads that uh, I'll be talking about after this. Okay, so let's start with the Gotenks banner first. And as you can see, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not the best Dokkan Fest banner I've seen, but it's decent. So we have Gotenks here who has two transformations, and we'll talk about that in a second, of course. We also have the Super Saiyan 2 Angel Goku who transforms into Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku, still a very good unit. When they released on Global, they were a little bit slept on, I feel like, but not because they're not good units, but more so because the timing of their release was a little bit unfortunate. And uh, we also have Fizz Piccolo, a very, very good unit. Tech um, Trunks, of course, amazing too. Uh, AGL Gogeta, amazing. And Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, obviously a little bit outdated, still hits pretty hard, but he will be getting an Extreme Z Awakening sometime soon on JP since they're starting to do 120 lead EZAs, right? So I'm excited to see what his EZA will look like. And if it's really good, then his presence on this banner might be you know, a lot better than it currently is, right? And then we have the Tech Super Saiyan 3 uh, Gogeta, as, sorry, Gotenks as well. So uh, that is the Gotenks banner. Let's quickly talk about what Gotenks can do. His leader skill is Special Pose, which is a brand new category. Uh, you know what, I, I will show you guys real quick. It's, it's pretty dumb, I'm not gonna lie. It says it consists of characters boasting special fighting poses. 
So as you can see, we got Go Tanks, we got uh, Ra Kakunsa, I almost called her Rakunsa, Kakunsa, as well as Rosie. And then, uh, you know, a few other random characters. I guess all these characters have like signature poses, so like Saiyan Man, and uh, you know, Ginyu Force members, and so on and so forth. But yeah, overall, a pretty trash category, if I do say so myself. And at this point, it just kind of feels like they're running out of ideas for new categories. But anyways, let's move back to the Gotenks. His second leader skill is Youth Category, Q plus 3, HP and Attack plus 170% and Defense plus 130%. His Super Attack greatly raises Defense for one turn, which is a 50% boost and causes immense damage. And his passive is Q plus 1, Attack and Defense plus 100% and Transforms when conditions are met. So in his base form, he's really nothing special, he just gets 100% Attack and Defense and one key, but he does transform fairly quickly, starting from the third turn from start of battle, which is nice. And his links are Signature Pose, Signature Pose, Saiyan Warrior Race, Saiyan Lineage, Innocent, Fuse Fighter, Supreme Power, and Fierce Battle. So once you get to the third turn of the battle, he'll transform into Super Saiyan Gotenks, and his new super attack greatly raises defense for one turn, causes immense damage with a great chance of stunning the enemy. And this is actually a 70% chance to stun the enemy for two turns, which is pretty awesome. And his passive is key plus two, attack and defense plus 100%, high chance of attack plus 50%, with a high chance of an additional attack plus 50%, and then high chance of defense plus 50%, with a high chance of an additional defense plus 50%, and then medium chance of launching an additional super attack. So as far as Passives go, this is one of the most RNG dependent passives I've ever seen, right? Like, if you have nothing proc, let's say you get very unlucky, and none of this goes off, then all you're looking at is Q plus 2 and attack and defense plus 100%, which is pretty bad for a transformation, but you can also get really lucky and get Q plus 2 and attack and defense plus 200%. And also an additional super attack. When, by the way, this is a 25% chance to, to launch an additional super. So, as far as my personal preference goes, man, I hate units that are very variable like this. You know, like super dependent on RNG. But uh, overall, it's not bad, right? A lot of times you will be getting a combination. So you're gonna be getting like either 150% attack and 200% defense, or 200% attack and 100% defense, or 150% to both or some other combination and uh, you know a quarter of the time you can also get an additional super so uh, he is good. I'm just personally not a huge fan because I usually like to know exactly what I can expect from my units when I use them and you can't really do that with this guy because he's gonna be awesome sometimes but also not so awesome other times you know but it is an interesting passive for sure and of course he also has an active skill, which triggers his second transformation into Super Saiyan 3 Go Tanks, and this can be activated when HP is 70% or more, starting from the fourth turn after his first transformation. So, if you add up the conditions here, from base form to Super Saiyan, it's three turns, and then from Super Saiyan to Super Saiyan 3, it's four more turns. So, a grand total of seven turns. For this guy to reach his final transformation, which is a ton of turns. Although, although there were many people that told me that if you float him off rotation the first time he transforms, then you can actually get his final transformation in six turns, as opposed to seven turns. Now, I haven't had a chance to test this out myself in game, but there were enough people that told me that I tend to believe it. But even so, six turns is still a lot of turns to reach the final transformation for a unit and that means that for shorter events and for a lot of Dokkan events and stuff like that, you won't actually be able to see this Super Saiyan 3 form. But for longer events of course like the Legendary Goku event, um, Infinite Dragon Ball History and so on and so forth, then you should see this pretty often, right? But I do feel like the actual conditions to get the final form it's just a little bit too restrictive, although you could argue that it's worth it, because this form is amazing. Alright, so as a Super Saiyan 3, his super attack greatly raises attack and defense for 3 turns, and that is 50%, but this, this one can be stacked, right, multiple times. 
and causes immense damage with a high chance of stunning the enemy. So that's 70%. Oh, sorry, it's 50% for two turns. And his passive is attack and defense plus 100% plus an additional attack plus 100% when performing a super attack. And then key plus three and great chance of launching an additional super attack for four turns from the start of the turn. And this is a 70% chance. So of course, still a little bit of RNG, but a lot less dependent on RNG and randomness, right? So yeah, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, absolutely amazing. Not as big of a fan of this form, obviously, but being able to reach this form eventually makes getting through the Super Saiyan Gotenks form totally worth it because like I said, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks is an absolute monster. He hits super hard, can launch multiple supers, and it's just overall a very, very good unit. Um, his links are going to be Limit Breaking Form, Super Saiyan, Over in a Flash, The Innocence, Fuse Fighter, Supreme Power, and Fierce Battle. And obviously a ton of uh, categories for this Gotenks. Fusion, Hybrid Saiyans, Majin Buu Saga, Super Saiyan 3, Transformation Boost, Youth, Super Saiyans, Last Resort, Special Pose, and Rapid Growth. Alright, so that is the Gotenks for you. I feel like we've spent a ton of time on this guy. Oh, last thing I want to mention is that his additional attack plus 100% is calculated separately for a total boost of 300% attack when performing a super attack. Okay, so yeah, this dude, absolute monster. Let's move on to the Boo Banner now, or the other half of this Duel Dokkan Fest. And I think this banner might be a little bit better. A little bit better than Gotenks. Actually, you know what? Let me check. Let me check. Um, hmm, you know what? I think they're pretty similar. I think they're pretty similar. Obviously, a lot of these units are just the other half of uh, their respective dual Dokkan Fest, right? So we got Boo right here, who Dokkan Awakens into Good Boo and Evil Boo, and then also has an exchange. And then we have the Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta from the Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta and Super Saiyan 2 Goku dual Dokkan Fest. And then we also have AGL Zamasu, we have Fizz Broly, AGL Metal Cooler, STR Boo, and uh, also Super Saiyan 3 Broly, who is getting his Extreme Z Awakening on JP very soon. So it's going to be interesting to see just how good he ends up being, because prior to this EZA, he is kind of borderline, like, unusable. So yeah, like I said, pretty, you know, similar value to the Gotenks banner. And why don't we talk about the Go Tanks? Or sorry, the Boo now. His leader skill is Majin Power category key plus four, HP attack and defense plus 170%. Taking a quick look at this banner here, it's um, definitely better in my opinion than the signature pose category. And there's a lot of Boos obviously, but also we got Majub, basically a Majub slash Boo category. And that's it. Yeah, slightly better than Signature Pose, but still not a great category. And uh, also Artificial Life Forms, key plus 3, HP and Attack plus 170%, and Defense plus 130%. Super Attack, Kamehameha, greatly raises Attack for one turn, which is a 50% boost, and causes immense damage. And his passive is key plus 1, Attack plus 100%, reduces damage received by 40% which is very good, in exchange with Majin Buu, pure evil, when conditions are met. And then the conditions are just uh, exchange when you're on the third turn, or past the third turn from the start of battle. And uh, Link's Majin, Innocence, Kamehameha, Infinite Regeneration, Revival, Wall Standing Tall, and Fierce Battle. So there is the good Buu and evil Buu, and then after, or from the third turn onward, you'll exchange into Evil Boo, and his super attack greatly raises attack for one turn, causes immense damage, and seals super attack. Passive key plus two, attack plus 150%, reduces damage received by 40%, high chance of stunning the attacked enemy, which is a 50, sorry, 40% chance to stun for one turn, and medium chance of evading the enemy's attack, which is a 25% chance to dodge attacks, and then his active skill is uh, Absorbs Majin Buu Good, can be activated when HP is 70% or more, and then starting from the fourth turn after the initial exchange. So similar to 
the Go Tanks, I believe you can also achieve the final transformation on the 6th turn as opposed to the 7th turn. And once you transform into Super Boo, a super attack is going to greatly raise attack and defense for 3 turns, cause immense damage to enemy and seal super attack, and then key plus 3, attack plus 220%, reduces damage received by 50%, then chance of performing a critical hit plus 12% per rainbow key sphere. Obtained his links are Majin, Brutal Beatdown, Metamorphosis, Infinite Ge Regeneration, Infinite Regeneration, Fear and Faith, The Wall Standing Tall, and Fierce Battle. Let's move on. Yeah, I think we spent enough time on this Duel Dokkan Fest. That is the Boo and Go Tanks Duel Dokkan Fest right there. But let's talk about the next thing here, which is probably the most. You know what, actually? It's between this or the next thing, but this Kefla banner I feel like might be coming right after the 350 million download celebration, or at least I'm hoping, because obviously they don't want to do uh, like two, two dual dual contests so close to each other, right? So it's got to be a regular banner, either a legendary summon banner or this Kefla banner. And uh, let's take a quick look at this Kefla banner. So I gotta say, this Kefla banner was kind of rough, man. It was kind of, it wasn't too bad, but it definitely wasn't great. Okay, so we got Kefla, we got a new Vados, who is actually very, very good as a support. And then we have Android, uh, Android 13, we got Tech Hit, we got Goku Black, we got Fizz 17, and we got Terlis. Not a bad selection, not a bad pool, just not great. All right, so it's an okay banner, but Kefla herself is fantastic. All right, Kefla is a beast. So her leader skill is universe six, category key plus three, HP, attack, and defense plus 170%, or rapid growth category key plus three, HP, attack, and defense plus 150%. This is, of course, a brand new category that's coming with Kefla, and I did hear a lot of complaints about it as well, but... When you compare it to Signature Pose or Majin Power, it's much better than those categories, okay? So this one consists of characters who were able to rapidly grow as fighters. So of course we got Kefla, we got Kale and Khalifla, we got uh, Mighty Mask, we got AGL LR Gohan, and overall, as you can see, man, not a bad selection of characters. All right, not a bad selection at all. We do have the Int Go Tanks right here from the Dual Dual Confess we just talked about got a bunch of Gotenkses, we got a couple of Vegetas, um, you know, like, it, it's it's not the greatest thing I've seen, but it's definitely a lot better than the previous two categories, okay? So that's Rapid Growth, and his, or her, sorry, her super attack is Gigantic Crash, raises attack, this can be stacked infinitely 30% every single time, and it causes immense damage and lowers the enemy's defense by 40% for three turns, her passive is defense plus 100%, attack plus 100% when performing a super attack, plus an additional 50% attack, and high chance of evading enemies' attack with six or more key spheres obtained, transforms when conditions are met, and she'll transform into Super Saiyan Kefla when you are on the third turn or beyond. In the battle, her links are Saiyan Warrior Race, uh, Battlefield Diva, Fuse Fighter, Power Bestowed by God, Warriors of Universe 6, Tournament of Power, and Fierce Battle. And categories are Peppy Gals, Universe Survival Saga, Patara, Full Power, Transformation Boost, Universe 6, Super Saiyans, Super Saiyan 2, Last Resort, and Rapid Growth. Okay, so tons of categories, um, really solid passive right off the bat, but it gets a lot better, of course. So once she transforms into Super Saiyan Kefla, her super attack raises attack still, causes immense damage, and greatly lowers the enemy's defense. Her passive is defense plus 150%, attack plus 150% when performing a super attack, plus an additional attack plus 50%, and high chance of evading enemy's attack when 6 or more key spheres are obtained, and then transforms when conditions are met. And then to transform into Super Saiyan 2 Kefla, she will transform upon entering next attacking turn, when HP is 60% or more. So essentially, a lot of times you can just get her transformation into Super Saiyan 2 on the fourth turn, right? Actually, no, not on the fourth turn, so you gotta, gotta pass the turn first. So it'd be on the fifth turn, right? So on the fifth turn, you can get her transformation into Super Saiyan 2 Kefla. And uh, as Super Saiyan 2, she'll raise attack still on her super, 
cause immense damage and massively lowers enemy's defense, which is 80% for 3 turns. Passive, key plus 2, defense plus 150%, attack plus 160% when performing a super attack, and high chance of evading enemy's attack including super attack, launches an additional super attack with 6 or more key spheres obtained. She has an active skill which changes fizz key spheres to str key spheres and attacks effective against all types for one turn and this can be activated when there is a pure saiyans or universe survival saga category enemy. Her links are super saiyan, battlefield diva, fuse fighter, power bestowed by god, warriors of universe 6, tournament of power, and fierce battle. So there is STR Kefla for you. She is a fantastic unit, man. She is really, really good. Definitely one of the best TURs in the game, no question. And uh, I'm hyped for her, man. I'm probably more excited for her than definitely Gotenks and Boo, and probably equally hyped compared to the next banner that's coming up. Okay, so there's Kefla. Let's move on to the last unit or the last banner we're going to talk about, which is for the these guys right here, the LR Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta, which JP just got for their Tanabata celebration this year. And this banner was okay, was okay. There's some highlights and some lowlights. We have the you know blue boys right here. And we also have a brand new Krillin who is very, very good. This Krillin is actually a fantastic unit. So he's nice as well. And then we have Fizz Beerus who I personally love. And he is the only super type 170% lead for Realm of Gods, which is one of the best categories in the game. So in my opinion, he's a must have. And then of course, Gobros still, you know, maintains their spot as like one of the top five units in the game, in my opinion. And uh, the rest of the banner is pretty mediocre. Like, I'll be honest, man. I mean, look, these guys can still be good, but how many times has transforming Goku and transforming Vegeta and SSBE and Jiren and UI and Golden Frieza been featured, right? Like, at this point, if you've been playing this game for a while, you probably have these guys with a couple dupes, if not all rainbowed. So I'm definitely not that excited to see these guys here, but the first four units of this banner, very good. Very good. Okay, so that's the banner right there. It's okay, but let's move on to the actual unit itself. And I think to nobody's surprise, as a brand new Dokkan Fest exclusive LR, these guys are absolutely insane. Okay, their leader skill is Desperate Struggle or Joined Forces, category key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 150%. So Desperate Struggle is this category right here, which consists of characters engaging in an all-out desperate struggle. So it doesn't really tell us that much more, but uh, I'll give you guys a quick look here. Not a bad category, alright? Not a bad category. Um, it could have been a lot worse, I'll just say that. It definitely could have been a lot worse. Not the biggest category we've seen, but um, I'll take it at this point, man. Uh, I feel like they're just running out of ideas for categories. If I'm being honest and maybe it's time to switch up the meta a little bit you know try something different I don't really know what it what like what they could do honestly but there's just too many categories and honestly in my opinion too many categories that are not necessary but that's desperate struggle for you and uh, their 12 key super is destructive disc and gallic gun which greatly raises attack and defense for one turn causes colossal damage and lowers attack the 18 key greatly raises attack and defense for one turn and causes mega colossal damage and lowers attack and defense. Passive is attack and defense plus 70% plus an additional attack and defense plus 7% per key sphere obtained and chance of performing a critical hit plus 7% and key plus 2 and launches an additional attack up to 3 with each rainbow key sphere obtained. So all of this, this part right here is based off how many rainbow key spheres they can get. And for the additional attacks, they are guaranteed to be normal attacks. Alright, so these three, up to three additional attacks are all going to be normals. But if you give them a decent amount of orbs, these normal attacks can still hit pretty freaking hard, especially if they're crits, right? And their active skill is called Full Spirit Full Body Release. Interesting. And it gives them 24 key, attack plus 70% and defense minus 50% for one turn. 
and then can be activated when HP is 50% or less once only. So of course 50% defense debuff is pretty significant. That's going to hurt a bit, especially on harder events, but this 70% attack boost is insane. It's basically a huge nuke the turn that you, you know, activate this just like the Tech Broly, right? So a lot of enemies aren't actually going to survive the attack. But if you don't kill the enemy, right, like on harder events like LGE, for example, then losing 50% defense can be kind of dangerous, especially if you have type disadvantage, right? So you got to be a little bit careful with this, but it's still amazing for sure. Don't get me wrong. And their links are Super Saiyan, Godly Power, Warrior Gods, Kamehameha, uh, Tournament of Power, Fierce Battle, and Legendary Power. And categories are Universe Survival Saga, Realm of Gods, Pure Saiyans, Full Power, Reps of Universe 7, Join Forces, Kamehameha, and Desperate Struggle. So that is the unit right there. One other thing, some quick maths. Active skills are always calculated separately from passive skills, meaning their additional attack plus 70% would result in a total attack boost of 189% attack plus an additional attack plus 11.9% with each key sphere obtained. All right, so there you go. On the turn, you pop that active skill. They're gonna be crazy. They're gonna be insane. But even without the active skill, they're just consistently doing very, very uh, impressive damage. And it's just a great unit overall, for sure. Some people say they're the best unit. I'm still a little bit undecided, but I can definitely agree they're in the top three. All right, I think they're in the top three. Are they the best unit in the game? I'm not sure yet. But anyways, that is today's video guys, those are all the banners, all the units that are coming up that we know about from the JP side to global that I wanted to make sure all my fellow global players were aware of so that you guys can still continue to save your stones after the anniversary ends because like I said, the anniversary is not the end of Dokkan, right? There's still going to be a lot of stuff to save for, a lot of great units coming and I just want to make sure that you guys are ready and prepared once these things drop okay of course once you get more information about the upcoming you know download celebration and what the units are going to be what the theme's going to be i'll make sure let you guys know and keep you guys in the loop but for now that's all i gotta say hope you guys enjoyed the video as always and let me know in the comments down below which of these things which of these banners or units or celebrations i talked about in this video are you guys the most excited for and if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here until next time. Hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.